Hey YouTube, Frost here, and I'm always being asked in my Twitch chat or the YouTube comments what I consider to be the best builds and what builds I use all the time. So I'm going to make it easy. I'm doing a whole video compilation on my Titan Hunter and Warlock. I'm going to share with you what I personally consider to be some of my best builds to use inside a Crucible. This is not meant to be your favorite build. It's not meant to have your favorite grenade, stat setup, or different exotic setups. These are the setups, the builds that I always go back to, the ones that I can rely on the most, and the ones that I can confidently say that if someone else tried to copy it, they would have good success with it and enjoy it. So this is going to be a good video for a lot of you guys to learn. So if it helps some of you and if you enjoy some of this type of content, do let me know by dropping me a like, leaving me a comment and subscribing to the channel. Let's go ahead and dive in. It's something different for me to try, but I hope it's fun. Let's go. All right. First up is going to be one of my most iconic builds. This is definitely something that people kind of just know me by as a striker player, someone who used Dune Marchers for years. I've been playing striker Titan since like Destiny 1. Now, I'll go ahead and cover everything as to why I'm using it. It's more of a serious build. First up, let's take a look at my stats. Now, I don't care about mobility. I kind of just use Dune Marchers to make up for any of the stats that I'm missing here. Resilience, I decided to go tier 10 because I prioritize having that barricade spam as much as possible so that I can do jump snipes over the barricade, go for revives, use it for cover, and just kind of dance around the shields when I'm fighting other players. Next up is what I consider to be the most important stat in the game, recovery. Now, if you're watching this to start off, it's going to be a reoccurring theme. Recovery on all my characters is pretty much the tier 10 stat that I always have. Basically, the point is I need to regenerate my health as quickly as possible because if I can get max HP, I can fight sooner. Think of a situation where you get body shot by a sniper rifle or a bow. I'm weak and the faster I can get max HP, the sooner I can peek them without them just hitting another body shot to kill me or hitting an arrow to just destroy me, right? Like things like that matter. So even if I'm a little bit weak, it can still mean a big difference in losing a fight. Next up are two valuable stats. So grenades are always important. I always want to invest in my grenades. It's interesting that I didn't invest into tier 10 discipline here, but it's for good reason because I wanted to put some of that energy into intellect so I can get my super much faster. Thunder Crash is very, very strong to the point they nerfed it so that it takes longer to get, um, which is why higher intellect is even more important now. So again, because of that intellect investment, I don't have tier 10 grenades, but it's still okay because two lightning grenades that I get on my Titan is incredibly powerful. Now my strength, I didn't invest into it much at all, just like my mobility, because I don't use shoulder charge to kill players. I use the shoulder charge for strictly movement uh, ability options, okay? So that's exactly why I didn't invest into that stat. Now my exotic of choice, these have been kind of like my companions for so many years. And even when other exotic choices have become more powerful and these have been nerfed over time, I still use them just because they're not bad. So for starters, it increases my sprint speed. Um, we just feel faster. We feel like our time is not that slow. And I really, really do appreciate that in shotgun sliding duels or sliding around the corner to hit primary shots. It really helps me in that scenario, especially if I'm trying to like slide around the corner, dodge a sniper bullet or get the uh, edge in a gunfight, sliding around the corner with a hand cannon. It matters a lot. Now here, the arc chaining capabilities when I punch somebody is not that crazy anymore as compared to before, but it's still free damage, especially if you're surrounded by multiple targets, which as a Titan, I find myself often kind of in close quarters surrounded by the enemy. I can get some crazy trades whether I no scope melee somebody um, and then I get the punch and I change other targets. They just get cleaned up easier by my teammates. So it kind of rewards me for making a crazy play and it helps my teammates uh, secure the other kills and kind of kind of forgive me for dying right so while we're here looking at the armor let's take a look at my mods so typically on my helmet and by the way this is going to be a reoccurring theme again i'm always going to invest on two types of targeting mods um, one that doubles down on my primary of choice or the other one that goes ahead and helps my special weapon like a sniper rifle or a shotgun so for example if i'm running matador i'll typically will use our targeting kinetic for my rows or something like that on my gauntlets i will always want some type of reloading mod and i always prioritize some type of dexterity so if it's for a shotgun obviously i'll use like arc dexterity so you see the combo here something that i always do i won't put on firepower or heavy handed nothing like that on my chest piece i'm always going to prioritize two different types of unflinching one for my primary and then one for my special weapon even though i'm shotgunning i still want that 
unflinching Arcane for a Matador, for example, because if I slide in, the last thing that I want is somebody shooting me and making my shotgun flinch, thus losing the fight. It's very important in shotgun duels. It's something that not a lot of people think about, but when both players slide at each other, if he shoots you first and he's not in range to one shot kill you, if he flinches you and your aim goes up and you miss, then he kind of just beats you for shooting first. And that's a terrible thing. It used to be a problem in Destiny 1 and it got changed here in Destiny 2. It's not as drastic, but it still happens, all right? Because if he shoots you, does not get the one shot kill, you don't flinch, you get the one shot kill because now you guys are closer. So you see the magic there, very important. Um, Here on my boots, I will always use better already. This will be something I constantly do on every character. I pick up a normal power and I heal. This can be insanely clutch in so many different situations, um, which I love it because it especially gives me an opportunity to make a more aggressive play if I know I'll get an orb or if I see an orb next to me that I can just play around. I'll typically use two different types of mods here. Uh, Innervation for more grenades, um, but I do like to save an extra mod slot for something like a solar holster or arc holster to reload my special weapon in the back as I'm using my primary. So normally nowadays I will use that special weapon holster. It's very good and it helps you, you know, to save time from having to just reload every single weapon. For my class ability, I always kind of just double down on the grenades. Got bomber and reaper. You pop a barricade, you make a norv, you feed yourself more grenades, right? Very very simple stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about my subclass. All right, for my subclass, the aspects are obvious picks, knockout, so that I can go ahead and get that extra melee range. And it does a little, little bit of extra damage. The best part about it is I can heal myself so I get some primary damage in or damage with a special weapon, get a melee punch, I heal myself. Um, and the next one would be Touch of Thunder for the double lightning grenades. That's the way that I play. So the reason I decided to use these two over something like Juggernaut, like I said, the melee neutral play is just fantastic to get those easy cleanups on players, especially if they're weak. It's a good way to heal yourself and stay in the fight. And the double lightning grenades, I just can't say no to because, you know, throw one, I miss. I got another one to throw again and some free damage. Good ways of just shutting down people on revives and just getting free damage on multiple players thanks to the jolting capability. So obviously that's why I'm running lightning grenade. It's self-explanatory on that. Sh shoulder charge for the movement, like I mentioned before. Big tall barricade over the rally barricade always and strafe lift because I play with space bar, no scroll wheel. Um, you know, unless you use scroll wheel, you will always use strafe lift. This gives you a really good combination of being able to, you know, jump high vertically and also being able to move forward pretty fast. High jump lets you get in the air much higher, but it's much slower, which is why, like I said, I prefer strafe lift. And catapult just doesn't take you up the air as high as this jump does. Now for the fragments, these are pretty, pretty simple to understand. We got spark of magnitude. Now in the case that people don't shoot the lightning grenades down, they will be definitely punished because the grenades will last for quite a while. It helps you save some time on, you know, someone trying to get a revive, that grenade is still there and they have to deal with that. Spark of brilliance is something I use because I want to boost my intellect. Again, I already mentioned that before, why it's so important. Uh, as for the rest of this, like in the description, it does not matter at all. I am simply using this for the stat bonus, and it's okay to do that sometimes. You don't need every single fragment to aid you in your, you know, weapons and your abilities. Spark of feedback is a pretty simple one. You get punched, you get benefits for that. You just punch back and do even more damage. Thanks to the plus 10 resilience, helps us get that tier 10 resilience. And, you know, that, that punch and getting that extra damage is what kind of makes a difference sometimes in case your shotgun doesn't do enough damage um then that you know hit from the enemy player will allow you to just kind of clean them up with a punch quite easily it's very effective it comes very clutch in those close range situations as a time very important i wouldn't see myself playing without this last but not least another example of just a stat bonus that i decided to use to get that tier 10 recovery i definitely want it and i need it i would not swap this out for anything else because that means that it would be a tier 9 recovery and that pretty much sums up my striker time of choice so next up is going to be one of my iconic one item mask builds this is all about healing and slaying i love to use it mainly inside of 6v6 but it's also really good inside of comp and draws of osiris so you know don't worry um, about its potential in those threes playlists it does put in work now, mobility, I don't care. I'm going to be more of a passive player with my primary. This this build really focuses on a lot of primary usage because when you outgun somebody, you heal, you can find somebody with an overshield, and you beat them, right, every single time. And it's incredible for slaying. So mobility is not important. Resilience, I want tier 10. 
for those faster barricades good way to just kind of block some incoming damage it is not a requirement to run tier 10 in this specific setup but because i can run triple 100s i'm doing it thought it was important to mention that next up recovery recovery is so important so that i can just heal faster and go back to fighting somebody even though i have one at mask i'm not guaranteed to win every single duel i'm not guaranteed to have the one the first shot advantage on an enemy player maybe you get grenaded maybe someone shoots you in the back it's important to be able to get cover and instantly heal back up and prepare yourself to fight somebody now the faster that i can recover the sooner i can help my teammates team shot back or the sooner i can peek around the corner and uh stop enemy players from pushing up or you know trying to get an aggressive cleanup kill on me tier 10 discipline i love having grenades in this setup because trip mines are just an effective way of just slaying enemy opponents i hit them with a couple primary shots i throw a trip mine to get insta killed if they're trying to like hide behind cover now it's a flexible nate spot to be honest because i also like to use healing grenade i know i have the tier 10 recovery i know i have the one head mask I will be using moss to heal myself but having that healing grenade on top of everything is just kind of overpowered right you're an immortal slain machine and it feels so strong and powerful to use inside a crucible now i used to love using thermite grenades back with the og sunbreaker but i don't find them to be as effective nowadays as compared to the other options so intellect it doesn't really matter here this is whatever stat you can get you get your sunbreaker you know the deal you go in and throw those hammers and you start slaying i love using sunbreaker hammer of soul it is so fun just throwing those hammers at players. I hate the Ballerina Super, but if you're playing threes, I highly recommend you use that because it has a faster base cooldown and that will win you games. Last but not least the strength. I don't care about strength. I'm using shoulder trust strictly for movement. If you get the occasional melee kill, don't stress. It's going to come back pretty soon. I mean, the cooldown is not that bad. So let's take a look at my aspects. I'm rocking Roaring Flames. Um, I completely hate using Consecration. I would never use this personally because whenever i slide like around corners i want to do a shotgun slide into a shoulder charge this entire aspect can just ruin that entire playstyle. i love sliding around corners and just around the map so if i want a shoulder charge as a mid slide the last thing i need is for this to lock me into the position that i'm in so i, I rock roaring flames whether it puts in work or not it's it's better than having something that completely just interrupts my type of play style Soul Invictus is amazing here. You get grenade kills, um, shoulder charge kills, sunbreaker kills. You make those sunspots. And basically, uh, it's just another way of me just kind of going around, healing myself, getting more abilities, continuing the rampage. You can see the theme is kind of just slaying a lot. And that's why I like having those sunspots up a bunch. My fragments are pretty standard here. If I manage to hit somebody with a melee, I get radiant. And that's going to help me just kind of get more aggressive on the next target. Mind you, since I have one-eyed mask, I run in with a shoulder charge. I'm going to heal myself. So that, that healing plus the radiant. I mean, whoever challenges you next better be ready <laughs> because they're about to get slayed. Ember of Searing defeating Scorched Targets grants melee energy. While effective, I'm mainly using this for the recovery plus 10 stat. Again, that's kind of my priority. Always want that tier 10. Next up is your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. If I manage to hit somebody with a sunspot scorch, trip mine or my shoulder charge, I get the barricade back faster. Pop the barricade, I'm going to get more nades, right? It just synergizes well with each other. Part of the reason I have it on there. The last but not least is I pick up a fire sprite. I gain restoration, mainly using this for the plus 10 resilience because I can. I already kind of consider using all the other different fragments and none of them are really that kind of necessary or that impactful to my playstyle. So I said, might as well get that tier 10. That fire sprite can be a little bit clutch here and there maybe as you're just running around the entire crucible map healing yourself. That pretty much covers my subclass. As for the mods, we're going to be using a targeting for either my primary and my special weapon. So if I have a Rose, kinetic targeting. If I have a shotgun, like a Matador, always arc targeting. So this is going to be a recurring, thing, recurring theme, always one for each weapon type. As for my gloves, pretty similar setup as I had on my Striker Titan. I was going to have a reload mod, some type of dexterity. Even though my Titan is kind of heavy, right? Because I have that low mobility. We don't want our weapons to feel too heavy. We still want that snappiness. We want to be able to react. So if I was soft to a shotgun or a sniper fusion, whatever it may be, I want to be able to have that weapon ready up much sooner. Um, I like to throw on a fastball here to make those trip mines even more insane because normally without a fastball, the trip mines feel a little bit kind of like sloppy, not as fast, not as effective. So the mod is actually an insane touch for this setup. 
As for my chest piece, pretty standard. We're rocking and flinching for both the primary and the special weapon. Pretty good stuff right there. And for the boots, pretty standard. Better already. I pick up a Norv randomly out of nowhere. I'm healing myself. Just another way for me to play around and kind of heal myself and play more aggressive and stay in the fight longer than I'm supposed to, really. I like to use a grenade mod because more grenades is always a W. Whether it's a healing grenade or a trip mine, innervation is solid. I can double down on that. Rock another innervation, but I do enjoy using I do enjoy using holster mods. So if I have like a arc shotgun, I'll slap on a holster so it reloads itself in the back, and I have more time to just run around with a primary. I like that fluid gameplay. It's just kind of go 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 go. Very strong build so far. Double bomber, just more grenades. You know, I don't care about my shoulder charge too much. I already established that. If I pop a barricade and I get a kill, I might as well make a norv and you know fuel the grenade spam even more. That pretty much covers my Sunbreaker on this setup with one eyed Mask. The last but not least build is going to focus around Crest of Alpha Lupi. Now, this exotic and this build basically takes inspiration from something like Wormhusk Crown on a Hunter. When you dodge, you basically heal yourself. Now, when I pop a class ability on my Titan, I also heal myself. Now, this entire build is incredibly strong, not only to heal yourself, but also your teammates around you. You see, you pop a Crest of Alpha Lupi Barricade, your teammates will heal, and then you have other capabilities in this subclass that do the same. As for the stats, pretty standard stuff. If you need a little bit more explanation as to why I have certain stats the way that I do, check out the previous breakdowns on either Striker or Sunbreaker. For mobility, standard, just low mobility, don't care. High resilience on my time for more barricades, recovery. It's so important so that I can always get back into the fight sooner. Even though I have all these ways of healing myself, I still prioritize that tier 10 stat. Now my discipline, if I could get tier 10, I definitely would. It's kind of difficult on this setup, at least for me with my armor. And you'll see why here in a second as we break down the fragments, but always want grenades. This is pretty much standard. If you kind of uh, been watching the video now, you understand that more grenades is better. So... On my intellect here on my tie-in bubble, if I could get this up to like four to five, it'd be sweet, especially in the current day metas, uh, because getting that bubble sooner kind of guarantees you a win sometimes, especially because you feed orbs to your teammates. I don't care about my strength too much. I pretty much use it for movement. Um, I would try to invest a little bit more in this one if I could, considering the fact that I do love to go in with a shock and shoulder charge on tie-in sentinel specifically. So... What else is going on here with the aspects? Now, Barricade Bastion is just so strong, dude. You pop a barricade. Not only are you healing yourself with Crest, you also pop that overshield around your teammates. Now, they have overshields. If they were weak, they also get the health from Crest of Alpha Lupi. It's important to know that Bastion does not heal you like your actual HP values. It only provides an overshield on top of the health that you have already. So, this in combination with the Crest of Alpha Lupi basically screws over a lot of enemy players that try to rush you and get a cleanup. They might think you only have 50 extra HP from the barricade, but in reality, you have way more health than they ever expected, and it completely just throws them off their A-game. Next up, Control Demolitionist. What an incredible aspect. You throw an ability, and they just get hit with Volatile. I love this aspect so much because not only do you get health from killing Volatile targets, but it also kind of marks enemy players. If you just slightly hit them with a grenade, melee, whatever, they become volatile and it's much easier to track the enemy team and where they're going around. Now, another kind of just underestimated ability or part of this aspect is a whole actual explosion that goes down when you do enough damage. Now, it's not going to be something you experience too often, but whenever you're in some tough situations and fights and they're volatile, you do enough damage to them and even though you're you know, following up shot to a headshot doesn't kill them, they might end up blowing up and then they die because of that volatile effect. So very important to keep in mind, it's gotten me a lot of kills and it's been really clutch. I love using these two over the offensive bulwark. I don't care about getting more grenades and having the um, the extended melee range. Just having that overshield is, is game changing, man. It definitely can make a big difference. For example, if someone can shock on you, you can survive if with just enough HP to you know shotgun them back and they die and they can't kill you because just because you had extra health as for grenades there's a couple options that i really enjoy i kind of just change between them whenever i feel like it but the strongest option by far is definitely scatter grenade right now 
with the base cooldown being 145 and you stack that on top of the echo of undermining you have a grenade that is so powerful you stack that on top control demolitionist you can get team wipes you can just completely destroy anybody with this grenade it hits so hard now another grenade that i really enjoy personally that i kind of just use here and there is the vortex grenade while it doesn't do as much damage as a scatter grenade it is so good at you know keeping a player stuck you throw it at a barricade the tyrant cannot move they are stuck there for a second and that gives you an opportunity to just clean them up i had so many close situations with the vortex grenade just kind of a basically not allowing the enemy player to just move out of a position or stay stuck in a certain scenario so that i can clean them up with a primary and it just works beautifully well the last grenade option that i really like messing around with is a void wall grenade this just feels like a really easy way to hit players with controlled demolitionists it just completely destroys barricades especially if i drop it inside of a time bubble or a well they are going to be hurting so much thanks to this grenade but due to power creep i have to give it to scatter grenade this one is just the go-to pick it's so good as for the fragments uh first up is echo domineering i don't really care too much about the description i want that discipline as we're already hurting because of echo and undermining adding that weakening effect to the grenades not only helps your primary damage or just weapon damage in general to be more effective but it also just kind of makes the grenade even more powerful it does stack on itself so keep that in mind minus 20 discipline definitely hurts so that explains why we got more of that grenade stat here being able to heal myself from a shotgun punch um reminder if you are using the basic melee punch you're not activating shield bash then um this is where echo of leeching is so clutch and so effective to me because more often than not every single melee kill that i get is always just the basic uncharged melee right it doesn't apply any of these effects that shield bash has because in order to get any of these abilities to proc i have to be sprinting and procking the shield bash right you can't always just do that so those punches and kills on opponents healing yourself and your allies is really clutch i'm telling you plus 10 resilience too what what an incredible stat next up is echo of vigilance this is so solid you get in a gunfight 1v1 you beat them you get a little bit of an overshield it's very helpful in a sense that if you need to survive an extra shot from somebody else team shooting you you can do that because that extra overshield just helps you it's very effective minus 10 recovery but we make it work and that's pretty much it that covers my crest of alpha loopy on the void titan as for the mods pretty standard stuff targeting for my primary and a targeting for my special weapon now if you need a little bit more insight as to why i do this it's not about the target acquisition it's not about the accuracy it's about the aim down sight speed for those weapons it makes your hand cannon or your pulse more snappy and your shotgun and your sniper more snappy pretty standard stuff here on my gauntlets as well i like to use a reloading mod for my primary and a dexterity of some sort now if you don't mind too much i usually do swap out the dexterity mod for something else for example such as a bolster and detonation i throw that scatter nade is going to feed into that barricade spam because we do have a hefty cooldown on that bastion shield getting those crazy grenade tags on players is going to help me get that shield back faster i've already explained what crest does but a quick rundown basically i pop the shield i heal myself it works very much like a warm husk crown on the hunter very powerful and i mean additional orbs can't say no to that as for the boots pretty standard stuff i'm always going to run better already i pick up a random orb of power i heal myself very effective and clutch in so many different situations that better already mod is going to help you when you least expect it and you're going to be happy that you have it innervation is a mod that i like to use here for more grenade spam as we know the grenades are always so powerful in this game uh, for the last mod slot i do like to use either grenades or stasis one it's pretty much flex but it will catch me using a stasis holster as for the class item pretty standard double bomber mod so i can get more grenades the reaper mod is just so clutch you pop that barricade you get a kill it doesn't matter when it could be literally 10 years later but when you get that kill you're gonna spawn an orb of power and you're gonna enjoy that that covers the crest of alpha loopy tie-in setup and you can use this for 6v6 but I primarily decide to use this inside of threes like Comp or Trials of Osiris. It's much more effective in those type of scenarios as it's kind of a more of a build catering towards the, the passive play styles that you're going to encounter inside of those type of inside of those type of playlists. While six is you want to be more fast paced. I don't really enjoy this as much in there. It's not as fun, but still really solid. 
Quick summary. We covered Dune Marchers, Christopher Falupi, and one Ed Mask. I want to quickly show you my setups here on the subclasses in case you missed one. Um, all of these are flexible with your exotic. You can pair it with Christopher Falupi. You can pair it with Dune Marchers. You can pair it with one Ed Mask. It doesn't really matter. They've all been kind of uh, created in the sense where I can slap on whichever exotic I feel like using. And that pretty much covers the tie-in. Let's go ahead and talk about Hunter builds. First up is going to be my favorite build inside of Destiny 2. And that's going to be Strand with Sidorachne's facade, the Spider Bolt Spider-Man build. So for stats wise, mobility is definitely a priority for me. I want to have that dodge as much as possible as the dodge is going to do two things that I'm going to mention later as we break down the rest of the abilities. So on top of that, I also get a higher jump I get a little bit of better straight speed and it makes the hunter feel really effective at dueling and also just snappier in crazier close quarter combat. Tier 10 mobility is a must for me. If I had to change it, if I didn't have enough stats, tier 9 would be okay. As for the resilience, we're making a pretty big change if you've been watching the past uh, setups on my Titan. I'm not rocking that much resilience. Now, a lot of PvE players make the mistake of running, you know, high resilience on a hunter and a warlock as well when there are some benefits but compared to the other stat investments you can do it's not really worth it on my hunter i have a bunch of playtime and experience enough to tell you that tier 3 resilience is the minimum i should be rocking on my hunter tier 4 is okay anything higher than that i don't really recommend tier 3 feels very sweet no matter the weapon type that i have I don't really experience too much flinch in my duels, especially because of my exotic helmet, as you'll see as we continue to talk. Now, recovery. Pretty standard. I've mentioned this already plenty of times on my time breakdown, but recovery is so important. Now, being able to regenerate your health faster means that you can peek out of cover and challenge a fight once more, or you can help your teammates much sooner. If you're hiding behind a corner trying to regenerate your health, telling your teammates, I'm one shot. I can't challenge yet. That means your teammates are alone fighting by themselves without your support. There's so many scenarios that I can give you as to why tier 10 recovery is such a priority, but I'll leave it at that. I want tier 10 recovery, always will. Tier 10 discipline for maximum uptime of my grapples. If I had to make a little bit of a change, if I didn't have enough stats, tier 9 would be fine, but because I can get the triple 100, that's exactly why I decided to invest into tier 10. Now, for intellect, I decided to go tier three now for sixes my intellect stat doesn't really matter i'll get a super and that's pretty much it inside of trials and the threes playlist it gets pretty interesting right on one way i think man it takes me too long to get my super and then i want to buff my intellect and then when i do it doesn't really have too much of an impact so what i found to be best uh, for my type of setup my build my experience here just run the lowest you can. You don't have to invest into the intellect at all. If you get it, it'll be because of a bubble tie or a well, and you'll be happy that you do because it's not that bad. It does some place here and there, but do not worry about the supers. The ultimate part of Strand Hunter is you can just beat them, slap up the enemy team before you even get to supers, right? We want to end the game as quickly as possible. <laughs> that's, that's my goal. As far as the strength, I don't really prioritize this too much thanks to the gambler's dodge effect. Every time that I dodge near somebody, I get that threaded spike much sooner. Threaded spike is the only melee option, but I'll give you some additional tips and context as to why this melee is so good. You can just treat it like a hand cannon shot, really. You hit a player, it does a lot of damage, especially if you peak shot with it around the corner. It might tag multiple opponents to slow them down. They're going to reconsider a potential push and try to regenerate their health. Uh, and on top of that, you can make yourself a crispy tangle if you defeat someone that's severed right strafe jump now i know some people already know why this jump is the best but i'll give you a little bit of context as to why strafe jump is always preferred over the other ones unlike pv triple jump is the best but in strafe jump inside a crucible it basically acts like a mid-air type of dodge you can jump up in the air fight somebody they're going to shoot you you can press space bar and you get a really fast very reactive ability that lets you you know kind of get ahead of people, dodge a bullet or something like that. People don't really think of it as another way of movement in the air, but it really is, which is why, you know, plenty of people in the past years have always had problems with stompies because they're just so difficult to hit. Use strafe jump is very fast and reactive. Very important. 
Now we got three grenade options. We're definitely going to be using grapple. Grapple is just insane. The skill ceiling is next level. I can't even like get down to the bottom of it and explain to you why and how it's so good without making an entire session of it. That could be like 30 minutes to an hour long. <laughs> grapple is amazing for the build. I use this because obviously it's going to mix well with my abilities and subclass. You'll see as we continue to talk. Ensnaring Slam, this is the go-to pick. I really like the Strand Clone, the little green man, and the Beyblade. But when it comes to Crucible, either I'm playing Sixes or Trials or Comp, this ability is so good to just pretty much slap a super, not super, sorry, slap a player that's around a corner or trying to shut you down. But I primarily use this as a means of movement. I fly in with my grapple. I use my melee to kind of dash forward. If I find that it's too much danger, I can always use my slam to go backwards. A lot of people think of the slam as something only to go forward, but in reality, you can use it to go any diagonal direction that you want. And um, when you slap on that backwards and snaring slam, you kind of uh, untap this potential of more movement of kind of just throwing people off their A game because you get cover and they don't know what to expect. They see the suspend incoming, but you're not actually using it against them. We got Widow Silk, man, double grapples. Best part about this is that I can make a grapple point. I can continuously rechain that grapple point, and that's going to synergize with my exotic helmet, which I'm actually gonna talk about right now instead of covering the fragments real quick. So this helmet is amazing for Strand Hunter. It's definitely S tier. It's the best choice in my opinion for Strand Hunter. I've tried a variation of other exotics, but this is definitely the best. Now, Woven Mill is is an overshoot that you get only for your body shots. And uh, if the enemy player can hit their headshots, that overshield doesn't matter at all. And most often than not, the overshield really doesn't matter. Um, it helps you be a little bit safer when you're flying it at enemy opponents, but I wouldn't rely on it. From experience, I can tell you, it doesn't really do anything. As long as the enemy team can hit their headshots, like they will because it's destiny too, trust me. <laughs> it's not something that you should be using the helmet for. It's actually the other benefits that come with the helmet. So when you do have that woven mail, guess what you get? You got increased flinch resistance and that is beautiful. So I love that flinch resistance because it helps you just kind of beam players without getting your shot flinched off target. It's so good for, for dueling, especially when I'm in the air. For whatever reason, it feels like the hunters just take more, more flinch midair, not just hunters in general, but me as a player. Um, so that increased flinch resistance is always super effective. All right, back to the subclass. So double grapple points. I make a point, re-grapple to that point. I keep that woven mill. I keep that DR and I keep that flinch resistance. It's effective. Now there's more benefits on top of that. And that is threat of ascent. So every time I activate my grapple, I get bonus handling and it lasts for quite a while. It is very generous and so, so powerful. That can make your shotguns feel more snappier, your snipers more snappier, being able to swap weapons, being able to ADS your weapons faster. It's really effective, and on top of that, you can also reload your primary, which means that if you have those grapple points and you're just constantly re-upping your woven mill, you're also going to be reloading your guns uh, much sooner. Not really something that you should concern yourself with. You should concern yourself with, but it's a cherry on top. So that plus ten mobility also helps me achieve that high tier ten stat that I want. Next up is threat of continuity. So I don't know if my numbers are completely correct, but you do get increased time on that suspend effect i mean obviously obviously as well as a threaded spike but really it's about to suspend so normally i want to say it's like a one second suspend time and then with this fragment it increases it to about 1.5 seconds it might not be exact but it's long enough to really notice a difference uh when i slapped this on my god my gameplay was insane especially when i went in and suspended either two or three targets i always had that extra time to just make a play on the other player before they're able to properly shoot me when they're on the ground and if i happen to die they are still suspended slightly long enough for somebody else on my teammates to start moving in and fighting that player that i use my class ability on so very worth it super strong i love it so much threat of a generation feels so good to use on my build because i have two grapple points if i use one and i'm just fighting casually throwing my dart putting primary damage in, 
Next thing you know, I got two grapples back and I'm like, yo, this is great. I get to move around a bunch. I do lose uh, 10 discipline, so it kind of sucks. But thankfully, I still got that triple 100s. Third generation, super effective. Last but not least, definitely very important. <laughs> this build kind of uh, doesn't work the same without threat of transmutation. And that makes the helmet even better. So what's beautiful about this build is that the exotic makes a lot of these like aspects and fragments better and the aspects and fragments also make the helmet even better. It's insane synergy really because every time I proc woven mail with my helmet from the grapples, which I already established, we're going to have a bunch of, I have the ability to make myself a tangle whenever I get a defeat. And the best part about it is that you don't need to be using a strand weapon to create those tangles. And the tangles help you a bunch in the sense that since you don't have a lethal grenade, those tangles can help you make up that gap of not having a lightning grenade, not having a scatter grenade or a solar grenade. You'll kill somebody. Now you have third person. You have that orb. You can throw it for some damage. You can throw it to give yourself some extra movement. And uh, when you see my gameplay, you definitely understand there's just so much potential and place to be made with a tangle. That pretty much covers my subclass. As for the mods, man, let's take a look at my helmet. Pretty standard stuff. Targeting mods for either my kinetic. The goal here is to increase the aim down sight speed for either weapon so they feel a little bit better, especially if I don't have that threat of transmutation, or I should say the um, threat of ascent active to make my weapon snappy. Next up, the gauntlets. So here is where things get pretty interesting. I 100% need heavy handed on this build. It is one of the key elements of making my plays so effective as they are now you see every time that i grapple in and i get a grapple punch kill i make myself an orva power this is going to feed into a later mod that i'm going to cover that allows me to heal myself and stay in combat much longer and also just get that kill and not die right away because when you fly in and just get that grapple melee you're kind of in the middle of chaos someone else can shoot you clean you up for the opponent but thanks to that healing capability you have more time to react and more time to get away from any potential danger. So that gives us some limited space here in the other mod slots. What can you really run? So if I'm running Strand, for example, thankfully we have Harmonic Dexterity, which works in my favor perfectly well. But in other case scenarios, you're really gonna have to get creative and start using weapons that, you know, have good reload speed on themselves or really good handling because you might not have space to use it. So if I'm running conditional finality, for example, I opt to not use a solar reload mod and then I put on something like stasis dexterity to help my shotgun swaps be a little bit faster. And I know where you're going to think to yourself, well, don't you have so much handling already from threat of ascent? And here is a big thing that a lot of people don't really consider, and that is the handling and ready stow speeds from dexterity is two completely different things. And I know this is a lot more complex than anything I've broken on my tie so far, but do try to follow me along. The handling is going to help you swap faster and make your weapon snappier, but the dexterity adds kind of like a, like a scalar or multiplier, if you will, to get those weapons out even faster and even more ready to just completely start shooting at an opponent player. And for something like conditional finality or any shotgun in general, that's perfect because when you swap your shotgun, you want to you know, shoot right away, right? You got somebody running at your face, that time is trying to shoulder charge you, you want that shot to be ready. So pretty much a flex really depends on what I'm using. If I need snappier weapons, um, I'll have a dexterity. If I want to reload, then I'll have a reload mod. But yeah, that pretty much covers that. As for the chest piece, pretty standard. We're always going to rock and unflinching for both weapons, whether it's a primary special weapon. We do enjoy that. So another reason we still do the special weapon unflinching is, as I covered in my tie-in setup, take into consideration I have Matador, right? And I get into a shotgun duel. The player, the enemy player, slides forward. He shoots his shotgun too early. He flinches me off target, and I don't hit him at all with my shot because of flinch. It can definitely be a, a make or break mod, right? I would say, like, if you don't have it, you could have those scenarios where you just kind of don't get to kill the enemy player because they make you flinch. Um, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is always be safe rather than sorry. Make sure your shotgun doesn't flinch and hit those pellets. On my boots, I got better already. Getting that over power randomly across the map is going to be so clutch. Um, I already established that if I get a grapple melee, I make an orb, I pick it up, I heal myself, I can get away. Now, on my class item, if I hit a suspend, 
or I dodge and I get a kill, even if it's like 10 years later, I'll make an orb and I can always play around that to heal myself. It's very clutch and I love it so much. Uh, next mod would be innervation for more grapples. And the last one, you can double down on the grenades, but typically I'm going to use a holster mod, whether it's for a sniper rifle to reload it in the back or an arc holster to reload my shotgun in the back. It really doesn't matter. I like the holsters so much. They're very strong. And I already covered why I use Reaper mod. If I do my dodge and I get a kill 10 years later to make an orb, it works. Or if I suspend a target, get a kill on them while they're suspended, I still make an orb as well and heal myself. And I get all that extra benefits of being able to fight much sooner or just get away because I have extra HP. Level bomber to get more grapples. And that pretty much covers my strand setup. Next up is one of my favorite builds to use for fun, but it's also really effective just in general. Um, in sixes and the threes playlist, I've tried it everywhere and it always works for me. I kind of like to call it Radiant Forever and it focuses on Aeon Swift. Now, Aeons is usually seen as a PV exotic, but it actually has some crazy utility inside of Crucible. Now, in sixes, there's a lot more teammates available that die and grant you class ability. It can happen in threes as well. And in modes where you can get revives, you get a class ability instantly back. And that's pretty much the idea here is having that class ability available every single time. Now in our subclass, we pair that with Acrobat's Dodge to grant ourselves Radiant Effect. And that Radiant Effect is going to be some increased bonus damage on our weapons, making us much more lethal when we're just dueling and fighting whoever inside of PVP. But first, my stat priorities always going to be tier 10 mobility as so I am trying to get the acrobats dodge much faster in the case of my teammates don't die or don't get a revive I can always count on the cooldown getting me that dodge back much sooner in the background and combined with the a on swift it just feels like you have it every single time tier 3 resilience for more context take a look at the previous build breakdowns tier 10 recovery it is always my priority trying to regenerate my health much faster uh, so I can always get back into the action. Tier 8 Discipline, if I can get it to Tier 10, I would. 5 Intellect, um, I don't really care about where this really sits at. 3, 4, 5, 6, that's kind of like the area that I would stay at for my super. The base cooldown for Blade Barrage is very generous, so you don't have to worry too much about investing into it. You can always reliably get this inside of 6s, of course, um, but in 3s especially, you'll always have one, and it's going to be a nice shutdown super. Strength doesn't matter. I don't really care too much about having that knife for this particular build, but it's nice to have it when I do, and you'll see why. For more context as to why I have these stats, check out the previous uh, build breakdowns that I've done so far for the Hunter. But let's go ahead and get into it, the aspects. Now, we got Knock Him Down. It's an incredible aspect because it makes our Blade Barrage all the more effective. It states that it launches more projectiles, and with that, basically... Whoever I decide to solo super is guaranteed to die. Now, if I do like a little Beyblade whip, I can shoot the first wave of knives at a target. We'll try to get the editor to show you a clip here. And then you can change your aim towards a different side of the map. And you can kind of get a two piece, even if players are really separated. And especially because of the most projectiles, it'll be more achievable to do that type of play. But what I really enjoy about knock them down on my super is that I can just break bubbles and wells all the much easier. Next up, we got On Your Mark. What an S tier aspect. You dodge, you have increased handling and reload speed. It feels so good to have. It's basically like a Dragon Shadow or my Speed Loader Slacks just built into the subclass already. So that explains a lot as to why this aspect is very, very good. And with those things combined, I really have no room to slap on Gunpowder Gamble. I just don't find it worth it right now. Let's talk about my other ability. So we covered why I use Acrobat's Dodge, Radiant Forever, right? Really effective. The, the jump, uh, we use Strafe Jump. I've already kind of uh, explained as to why this is the best jump. If you need more context, you should check out the previous build breakdowns on my Shrine Hunter or Bacchus. Way to throw a knife is kind of a flexible one. You can go with the Proximity Knife for more consistent tags on the enemy player. But I like to use this kind of like a peak shot sniper bullet if somebody's like, Kind of just peeking around a corner i can pre-fire it or i can peek around the corner insta throw it to get a lucky headshot on somebody and then obviously get the kill on them but on top of that we can proc ourselves some radiant damage 
and give ourselves even more bonus damage without completely relying on having a dodge. My grenade here and my favorite one to use on this build is Trip Mine Grenade. I could just throw these and it's just guaranteed damage. It hits so hard and it's a good grenade, all right? Really good grenade. What about my fragments though? We got Ember of Solace. Raiden and Restoration effects apply to you have increased duration. We're using this, of course, because of Acrobat's dodge. When we do get that Radiant, it's gonna last even longer. We can go around with that bonus damage and it just, you just feel like you always have it forever. Next up, we have Ember of Beams. Your solar super projectiles have stronger target acquisition. Now, I normally don't like using this fragment, especially because I don't care about the plus 10 intellect. But in this case, Blade Barrage really benefits from that extra target acquisition. So much so that it's so worth it to have it. The blades literally like aimbot curve to players around corners. It just guarantees kills when sometimes it might just whiff. So for that reason, we need this fragment. It's I decided to just fit it in there. We needed it. Next up, Ember of Singeing. Your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets. Now, while our melee might not scorch targets too often, our trip mine, I'm guaranteed to always get tags with it. And the scorching is going to help me get that acrobat's dodge, kind of funneling into that fantasy of Radiant Forever. Next up, Ember of Searing. When I defeat Scorched Targets, I get a Fire Sprite. I'm not really using it for the description. I'm using it for the plus 10 recovery because that is my priority when it comes to the stats here. Last but not least is Ember of Torches. Powered melee attacks against combats grant me Radiance. And when I do get those nice throwing knife tags on opponents, I get another way of proccing that Radiant. And it is always so nice to have. As for the mods, let's go ahead and break it down. Pretty standard on the helmet as usual. We want targeting for our primary and our special weapon. Not really for the target acquisition or the accuracy. We want it for the snappiness, the aim down sight speed. I will always recommend one for each weapon. Next up, now one important mod here is fastball. I feel like the trip mines are not as effective if you don't have fastball mod on. It makes them so much stronger in my opinion. And it is so worth it, which is why I dedicate one socket for it. And in the rest, I'm always going to run a reloading type of mod and some type of dexterity. It's going to be catering to the weapon that has the lowest handling so I can swap to it faster. Our weapons should always feel kind of snappy, not too heavy. That's usually my goals with any type of build that I have. I don't want weapons to take 10 million years to swap to. On the chest piece, pretty standard stuff. We always want an unflinching for my primary and my special weapon. Even if it's a shock and it's worth having a unflinching aim mod that caters to that element because it helps you in those crazy fights when you're getting flinched by primaries or someone else's shotgun in a duel on my boots pretty standard a rock better already so i can grab a random orb of power and heal myself but uh, instead of running the grenade mod i like to run insulation as another means of helping my class ability cooldown be much faster so i can have that fantasy of radiant forever you can double down on that and run another insulation or you can do what I do and rock a holster mod for your special weapon so you don't have to worry about reloading those weapons. Just leave them in the back. For my cloak, just double bomber. Get more grenades. You know, if I do dodge and I get a kill 10 years later, <laughs> thanks to Reaper mod, I get that orb of power and it synergizes with the rest of the build. And that pretty much covers my Aeon Swift Solar Hunter build. Next build is going to be my Mask of Bacchus Stasis build. So if you don't know Mask of Bacchus, basically we get a blink-like ability that we could teleport across the floor. It doesn't work midair, but it is so effective at just kind of closing the gap on a player or using it defensively to get away from danger. Now, on top of that, we do have additional damage to Stasis and Arc weapons. And in some cases, it makes a big enough difference to increase your optimal time to kill or increase your time to kill in general. But we're going to focus on just the movement part of this because that's exactly why I fell in love with this build in general. I've always used this so much. It is very fun. Let's take a look at my stats. So I'm going to prioritize tier 10 mobility even more on this setup because my mask of backers has a crazy cooldown. You know, it locks me out from a dodge regeneration, which is why I really wanted to come back faster once that lockout is over with. Resilience on my Hunter, if you saw the last one, basically, I don't really care too much about Resilience. And the bottom line is, it doesn't matter too much. As long as I have the minimum of Tier 3, the flinch resistance feels fine. I don't really have any troubles with weapons killing me too fast. 
recovery is always going to be something that I prioritize. Being able to engage players much faster, getting into the gunfight quicker, uh, being able to just kill myself uh, before someone tries to clean me up. It, it's, it's a big stat to have, and I'm always going to prioritize a tier 10 recovery. Discipline. Now, you don't have to run tier 10, but because I have the triple 100s potential here, I'm doing it. It is so powerful with the dust fields, and you'll understand more as I continue to talk about it. My intellect. So Revenant Hunter is a pretty fast super, like you get it pretty quickly, which is why I don't really invest too much in the intellect. This build, by the way, is effective inside of sixes and the threes playlist, whether you take it into comp or trials. This build has been so good to me, no matter where I take it it's with all these stats and everything, it works fine. For the strength, I ended up with tier four strength. I don't really care too much about it, but when I do have those shurikens, they are really effective at what they provide. So, all right, aspects and abilities. Go ahead and dive into it. So, first of all, we won't touch a winter. We're going to buff up our dust fill grenades. This is so good for zoning. You throw it at a barricade, for example, it makes the time have a much harder time playing around it you throw it on a zone it gives the enemy team a much harder time to sit on it on a rift the list goes on dust fields are so effective um especially if you want to trap a player somewhere or just slow them down uh maybe you catch them out in the open they made a bad play they don't have any cover hey that dust field is going to make sure they know to play around cover much better on top of that we get a little crystal in the center that we can always shoot for more grenade energy but let's go on and move on to the next one. Winter Shroud. This in combination with Mask of Backers gives you a, such a good combination. If you find yourself getting rushed by someone with a shotgun, you use your backers to dodge backwards, for example. They are going to be slowed. They are going to have a much harder time closing the gap on you, thus giving you even more time to react and come up with a play on how you're going to shut him down, right? All right, that covers my aspects. Dustfield. Again, we already covered that. It slows players really effective the shurikens you throw those you bounce it on the wall you get a lucky tag they might die they get slowed it's additional damage and any kind of damage is effective don't worry too much about trying to hit a direct impact shuriken i always just try to go for the random bounces random damage especially just to get an idea of where the enemy players are kind of located you know i don't really know what kind of ex uh, example to give you but if i throw a shuriken and i see that damage take somewhere on the map like it lets me paint a picture better of where the enemy team and the enemy players are really kind of like positioned around the map so very effective kind of like the blind man with the stick you know <laughs> strafe jump is the best jump if you want more details check out the previous build here with a uh, strand hunter marksman dodge is my option of choice here now with mask of backers we're gonna have the same base cooldown regardless if we use the marksman dodge or the gambler's dodge now you can get your melee back faster thanks to this melee ability but i, I opt for the reloading because if i fly in um i'm kind of like trying to run away from a player or something the reloading is just so clutch for me in my experience in threes playlists especially having that automatic reload on my weapon helps me so much all right, let's go ahead and move on to the fragments. So first up, we got Whisper of Chains. While we're near frozen targets or friendly stasis crystals, we take reduced damage. Now, the description helps here, but the big part is that plus 10 recovery. We already mentioned it's a priority. Now, that crystal that we throw from the dust field is going to help us be a little bit more tanky. It's not something you should play around. It's not something you should consider that's going to save your life and win you a game or a duel. But it's very nice to have in the back as a cherry on top. We have Whisper of Shards. When we shatter crystals, we get more grenades. Plus 10 resilience. Can't complain about that too much. But it's really about the description for this one. When we shoot that crystal in the center of the dust field, we're going to get a uh, grenade much faster. All right. Our cooldown is insane. At tier 10, we have a 45 second cooldown. You slap on that fragment and my goodness, you're going to have dust fields on top of dust fields. Next up, we got Whisper Endurance. We got Slow that you apply to targets last longer. And you might think this just makes the Shuriken a little bit better, but what it does is actually makes the Dust Field last longer, unless it has been changed and I have no idea that it happened, but it, it is literally a key element to the Dust Fields. Now, I would never play Dust Fields without this fragment. That's how important it is. It, it goes well, uh, like it, it synergizes perfectly. You need both of these to make the most effective dust field and correct me if i'm wrong but this might actually make the stasis tornado from the super even better as well don't remember too much but really the point here is that you want to make sure you have whisper endurance to uh make the dust fields crack 
Last but not least, it's going to be Whisper of Refraction. When we defeat slow to frozen targets, we get class ability energy, and this is going to help us get our dodge much faster. We can't freeze targets really, but we have a shuriken and we have Whisper Shroud, we have Dust Fields, we can defeat those players that are slowed, and it's always going to work with this fragment. Very powerful. As for the fragments, pretty standard stuff here on the helmet, always a targeting for my primary or my special weapon if you need more context as to why check out the previous build breakdown that i did on my strand hunter for this video basically i want that faster aim down sight speed as for the gauntlets i want reloading and dexterity mods always effective stuff to have you can take away bolster and detonation but i always try to find a way to make this mod work in this build because hitting players with my grenade is going to help me get my class ability much faster and the reason i like that mod so much on this setup is because the dust fields are so huge they're so easy to hit on a player that you're guaranteed to just get those tags constantly to help your ability cool down for your dodge. Pretty standard stuff here for the chest piece. Unflinching for my primary, unflinching for my special weapon. If you need more context, check out the strand build. But basically, the unflinching is so important, whether it's a primary or a special weapon. Uh, in my experience, it's always, always worth having one for each. A little bit of a different setup here on my hunter due to the fact that I'm running Mask of Backers. I actually have mods that synergize with the dodge, the insulation mod. I pick up a Norv, I get more class ability, very effective, helps me have that constant dodge effect fantasy that I really want. On top of that, we need better already. So whenever we proc Reaper mod, right? We dodge in Backers, get a kill, we make an orb. Or if we backpedal with Backers, 10 years later, we might get a kill, we make a normal power. It's gonna synergize with all the mods that I already showed you, but getting that health regeneration is always so key. Um, it, it's really clutch, honestly. And that pretty much covers my Mask of Backers build here with Stasis. So here's a build that I love using, whether it's Sixes or Trials Comp, and it works perfectly well, no matter what type of weapon that I have. I love the handling bonuses that it gets, and I love the airborne effectiveness that I also have while using those weapons. And it just feels like top tier gameplay. And on top of that, my subclass is just so lethal in close range combat and just slaying everyone in the lobby. So it's going to focus on speed loader slags. Now, this is a slept on exotic. You dodge, you basically increase your reload speed, your handling and your airborne effectiveness for your weapons, uh, for yourself and your allies. Your allies will love you on top of that, by the way. So the handling is so cracked because on a pull strafe that's heavy, now it's going to feel really good. It's going to feel snappy, especially if you jump in the air. Whatever weapon that has bad AE, which is all of them pretty much, are going to feel pretty good to hit shots with in the air. And why that's effective is because you can backpedal against people that rush you with a shotgun or something, and you can still hit shots at them even if you're midair. Now, this stack uh, goes up to five, and you can just constantly keep dodging to give yourself more stacks or just defeats. And the best part about it is that if your teammates get an assist with you or whatever, it also counts to give you a stack. Now that pretty much covers the exotic. I want you to look at my subclass here and my abilities. I'm going to prioritize tier 10 mobility. I do want that dodge plenty of times, not only for my subclass synergy, but because of the speed loader slacks, I want to be able to give myself that constant handling buff as many times as possible. So it doesn't feel too jarring uh, when I don't actually have those buffs available, all right? So resilience, it's not really important here on my Hunter. I try to get it as low as possible. The flinch resistance doesn't feel too bad at tier three. Any higher, I really wouldn't recommend because the other stats are much more important. We got recovery. Tier 10 recovery is always a priority. The faster I can regenerate health, the much sooner I can get back into action. And that is always such a powerful um, ability to have here on our setup. Next up is tier 10 discipline. Now. I would have this at tier nine if I didn't have the stats available for it, but I, I got triple 100, so I'm going tier 10. More grenades, the better. This is pretty standard. No matter the build that I have, always going to try to have more grenades. Luckily, Gathering Storm has a pretty generous base cooldown. I don't have to invest too much into my intellect. Tier three, four, five, it's gonna be pretty solid. If you can get higher, even better, but I just, I tend to have tier three. I try to get that primary damage in. And when I do get my super, this is so good. It has to be one of the most satisfying supers to pop and get a kill with. It got buffed. People kind of just didn't realize they got buffed. It's very effective. It's quite easy to tag a player with now. And when you do land the, 
storm near somebody, they have almost no chance of getting out of it. It's a powerful, and I mean powerful, panic super. Last but not least is strength. This is a stat that I really don't care about at all. It is not important whatsoever because of my abilities that I'm going to break down right now. So, aspects. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Whenever I dodge, my next punch is going to do the jolting effect. And on top of that, I have increased lunge range. Now, I believe at this moment that lunge range might actually be more than what the Titan can achieve with knockout proc, which, you know, it's crazy, right? Those Titans can just snipe you from so far away with the punch. Now, think about a hunter. You can do the same thing, brother. You can hit them so hard with this punch. It's going to kill them, all right? There's some scenarios where I barely tag a player with enough primary damage to like not even break their shields. And because I got lethal current proc, I just completely delete them with this powerful punch. It's really good. Trust me. So the increased lunge range is effective if you go in with a primary, they're backpedaling from you. You're trying to shock and melee. You get the idea. Now, next up is flow state. Defeating jolted targets make me amplified. Now this is nice because you got more speed, your weapons are snappier, just a pretty solid neutral play exotic. And the reason I use this is because I don't like using Tempest Strike. I don't find it worth it. I, I'd rather just keep my basic melee and use that lunge effect more often than just even trying to do the electric slide thing. So when you dodge your, um, your, your, what is it called? You get more resistance, which is solid. It's not as powerful as it used to be, but you know, you still appreciate that cherry on top. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the other abilities here on my subclass. So combination blow is the go-to pick for me because I get to health regenerate after punching somebody and procking that lethal current. I already established how powerful it is. Now, when you can heal yourself on top of that, you kill somebody, nobody can clean you up. You can get out of there just fine. Now, the best part about this punch is not really exactly the healing. It's also because when you do get a kill with this punch, you get yourself another dodge back. And whenever I dodge somebody, I can get that melee back. You can see how it starts to synergize with each other. And because I get the dodge so often, <laughs> that means that I can proc speed loader slacks even more. So overall, this is why this build is so effective. You get it, right? I proc the dodge so much and I always have the powerful punches to take advantage of. All right, the fragments. The fragments are key pieces of this build. With this setup, I typically take a lot of damage. Even if I'm using primary, other people get me weak. If I get close quarters, shotguns and abilities get me weak. When I'm critically wounded, I'm always going to have more melees and more grenades. I don't worry about the melees much. It's about that grenade. Our bolts are so powerful. Now, these are quite difficult to get good with, but when you can, oh my God, it is so easy. And I mean easy to just clean up players around the corner, even if they jump up, right? Assume there's a solar grenade on the floor. You can jump above it. It doesn't hurt you. In our bolt, you try to jump up, left, right, diagonal. No matter what direction you run to, the arc bolt will tag you and it will do its guaranteed damage no matter what. And it is so effective, especially at chaining uh, multiple opponents. Now, one of the ways it really works well is that if you get somebody weak, they disengage. But you throw an arc bolt and it tags their friendly teammate. From that teammate's point, it's going to chain to the other enemy that you had weak and it, it cleans them up, which is it's just really effective. It works well. I love using this in threes. Very effective. Now, there's one piece that I need to make this art bolt powerful, and I wouldn't use the art bolts without it, and that is the spark of shock. Your art grenades jolt targets. That in combination with each other, oh my god, it's it's perfect. It's so good, so effective. Art bolt tag multiple opponents, kill one, and it does the chaining again. Oh my god, it's it's so amazing. Now, I'm using Spark of Volts just for the recovery. I told you already, I prioritized the tier 10 stat, very effective, so I am gonna be using that. Next up is Spark of Feedback. I'm not using this for the resilience whatsoever. It's actually for the description. When I take melee damage, I get more melee damage against the enemy player. So if you can envision yourself dodging near targets and punching and they punch you back, you're more resilient thanks to flow state, but you're also punching them even harder, which means you don't need to do as much damage with weapons or abilities to just kind of get that one shot melee punch and just knock them out. So very strong build. Love it a lot. As for the helmet mods, pretty standard stuff. 
always going to be trying to increase my aim down sight speed for my primary and my special weapon. When it comes to the gauntlets, you have the freedom of adding a reload speed mod of your um, choice, but I'm always going to try to slap on a dexterity mod for my special weapon. If it's a sniper like Beloved, I will put a solar dexterity. If it's a matador, I want arc dexterity. Being able to swap weapons faster um, is very key in these close range fights because if I'm punching, I need to be able to draw that shotgun back out faster, get that damage out, get a punch out and just clean them up. Very effective. Pretty standard here on the chest piece, always going for unflinching for my primary and my special weapon. If you need more context as to why we do that, check out the previous build breakdowns for my backers and my strand hunter. For my boots, same stuff as the previous builds. I'm going to try to invest into getting more grenades. Better already is so clutch. I pick up a random orb. I can make orbs of myself um, to just kind of pick up whenever I want to heal myself. It's always just a nice little bonus to have. It's very clutch. As for the last mod socket you can put on for more grenades or like I would prefer to use a holster mod to just kind of reload my special weapons in the back. And lastly, pretty standard here on my Hunter class item, we got the Reaper mod. When I do do that dodge and I get like a potential shotgun kill or I kill somebody 10 years later with a primary, I'm making that orb. I'll get grenades much back sooner. Okay, double bomber, very nice stuff. That covers speed loader slacks on my Arc Hunter. Let's go ahead and talk about Warlock builds. If you've been playing Destiny for years, some of these are gonna be really, really basic and similar to what we've had in the past. Not much has changed on Warlocks in terms of like what the best builds are and what I really like to use on this character. For starters, we're going to fit an aspect. If you need an introduction to this exotic, basically it gives you insane handling and reload speed on your weapons to the point where any kind of shotgun heavy pulse rifle, whatever it may be, feels snappy. You can draw it faster, you can aim it faster. You don't even need a reload mod on those weapons to get benefit from using um, said guns thanks to this exotic. Now, I used to give you a bonus melee range, but that got nerfed, and even after the nerf, this exotic is S tier, without a doubt. So, the exotic doesn't really do too much for a subclass, but I'm still gonna break down what I'm using. As for stats, I'm gonna try to get a little low mobility here because we do have Acres Dash, as our way of movement. The Icarus Dash helps me get to angles much sooner, escape danger, or just get more aggressive with it. As for the resilience, I like to run a little low for resilience, whether it's tier three or up to seven, it doesn't really matter. I don't go for high resilience values on my Warlocks um, on purpose. I don't care too much of it, but if I know well, I can give you a tip. If you rock, I believe tier seven resilience, you can tank some headshots from a sniper rifle while on your well, but personally, I don't play that way. I just shoot the sniper rifles and they don't snipe me. Next up, tier 10 recovery. So even more of a priority here on the Warlock because the recovery is tied to your rift. The more rifts you get, the more I can place them around corners and camp on it. I can even get an overshield if I sit on it long enough. I'm healing constantly. It is so good for those passive kind of campy scenarios where teammates are just, or teams are just shooting at each other constantly and nobody is dying. Staying healthy is going to help you win those fights. We got tier 10 discipline. So I always going to try to like prioritize more grenades on my Warlock because the Warlock is really good when it comes to their ability spam. The grenades are powerful. The melees are powerful. It actually gets quite complicated deciding, man, what should I invest into? Should I get more melees, more grenades? Ultimately, I decide that I like nades more because it's just a nice way of cleaning players up more often if they're one shot. So I got a low healthy tier five intellect here on my Warlock. And again, it's kind of complicated with the stat distributions because you can't go wrong with any of these stats investments. You see, the more intellect you have, the faster you get access to a Well of Radiance. But the reason I don't max it out is because it's already a generous base cooldown. It's fast. It's one of the fastest supers you can get in the game. And once you do, I mean, nobody can really shut you down. Now, a little additional tip, by the way, more resilience will make your well more healthier. So always personally cautious of where I pop it so that people can't shut it down and destroy it by shooting it. So it's just kind of one of those things that I learned over time to just adapt with without needing to invest too much resilience. So last but not least is my strength. I do invest a hefty amount of points into this because like I said before, Warlocks have crazy abilities with their grenades and their melees. And the more that I have those available, the more options to just hurting enemies and killing enemies I have. I don't have to worry too much about using my guns. So let's talk about the other aspect here. 
I'm actually using Touch of Flame. I don't personally run Heat Rises. I'm not the type of warlock that likes to float around the entire game and shooting players from above. I do prefer the enhanced grenade versions here with Touch of Flame. I love Icarus Dash. I'm grounded, more fast paced, like near the floor, and then doing all the damage or healing with Touch of Flame. So, first of all, one of the versions here that I use is Healing Grenade. I can just constantly heal myself and my teammates. A Restoration Times 2 is so busted, man. Like, it just heals like so well and people never die with this grenade but personally more often than not i do tend to go for a lethal grenade and believe it or not fusion grenades are actually my favorite pick for lethal option for doing damage being able to stick this to a barricade guarantees an easy barricade crack and if you you know throw it around the corner team i mean enemy teams are weak you get easy cleanups the additional scorch you get to them it's really annoying for players to go up against and i would know because i played against it a couple of times and i've acknowledged the power that the fusion grenade has only when you stack it with touch of flame now if you don't know what it does i'll read it here for you it explodes toys <laughs> yeah but i mean it's really effective trust me especially if you stick somebody oh you end their entire career as for the fragments let's go ahead and talk about it we got Ember of Torches, powered melee attacks against combatants make you an allies radiant. So this fragment is so powerful um, and even more powerful on a warlock than any other character. It probably is the easiest to proc radiant on a warlock, which is why I invested more into strength because the more celestial fire that I have, the more options I have of granting myself that bonus damage for my team and myself, but also I mean celestial by itself, good damage, good tracking, really effective at just annoying players with the scorch as well if you manage to tag them while they're trying to get a revive and while i'm on that note this build is effective no matter where you take it whether it's sixes or threes like in comp and trials it's really good it works next up ember of ashes you apply more scorch stacks on targets and then we have ember of singeing your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets so the idea here is every time that i'm tagging an enemy player with my celestial or my fusion grenade I get more access to the rift the more rifts i have the more healing i have the more control over the map i have because when i drop this rift on a certain part of the map yo that enemy team is not moving me out of there it's going to be really difficult and i mean difficult for them to get me off that power spot especially if i already found like a nice little peak shot corner a very a very powerful spot on the map the healing rift in combination with just having it always available is definitely key for me winning a lot of my map control engagements Last but not least, Ember of Searing. Definitely using it for the tier 10 recovery just to boost that stat up. It's my priority. But on top of that, I make a Fire Sprite more abilities after getting a kill on somebody that I hit with Celestial Fire. That covers the subclass. What about my mods? So here, I'll give you a little breakdown. I'm always going to prioritize a targeting mod for my primary and my special weapon. The goal is to have that faster aim down sight speed, um, but it doesn't matter too much now because we have a fitting aspect. So you can appreciate the target acquisition and accuracy bonuses that you get to your weapons. As for your gauntlets, now normally on other characters, I always put a reload and a dexterity mod. While you can still use some of that to increase the benefits a little bit, it's probably not worth it in my opinion. So I typically run abilities that help me get my class ability back faster or they intertwine with each other to give me more grenades or feed into more melee energy and that pretty much covers that on the gauntlet as for the chest piece pretty standard oh, i always want unflinching for my primary of choice and for my special weapon having that unflinching mod is going to help you just kind of be able to stay in those duels better especially if you get in a shotgun fight if they shoot you first um that unflinching mod is going to help you not get your shotgun pellets to go somewhere else, okay? On my boots, I'm always going to prioritize better already. It's something I always use on every single character. I pick up a random overpower, just a clutch way to heal myself. Innervation to get more grenades, pretty standard stuff. And I always like to use a uh, holster mod, or I can just double down on more grenades. Cloak or bond on my warlock, pretty standard. Same stuff I usually run on every character. A reaper mod, pop a rift, get a kill 50 million years later, and I make an arv, it's clutch. Level bomber for more grenades. And that's a pretty simple but effective fitting aspect build that I always like to use here and there. I can rely on it. Let's go ahead and talk about one of my favorite Warlock builds, and that is involving the Transverse Steps Exotic. You basically move really fast, and it feels so fun to have that movement on the Warlock. Let's go ahead and read the Exotic. The sprint speed is increased, 
and after a short time from sprinting our guns are reloaded a nice little benefit but it's really about that movement and that movement allows me to just perform better inside of the gameplay whether it's sixes or 3v3 but specifically for things like competitive pvp because i get to angles much faster i can slide around corners better my shotgun slides feel even more effective and my primary gameplay with the hand cannon feels even snappier so i'm actually going to pair this with the void walker setup i'll go ahead and break everything down if you need some context as to why i do certain stats check out the previous warlock build that we just did with solar but typically i run low mobility thanks to the boots i don't really need to invest into the stat at all resilience i like to rock it as low as possible with a minimum of, a, of at least tier three anything higher i don't really care additional benefits i appreciate i guess tier 10 recovery is always a priority to me no matter what character i'm playing especially because it synergizes with that healing rift that i can always pop and heal myself in lockdown areas all the more effectively tier 10 discipline like i've always stated with the previous build we did in this video the more grenades the better we always appreciate it i'm rocking a little low intellect tier 2 so typically i use this setup inside a comp and i'm always going to have a super at some point in his sixes especially so the higher intellect is not really that much of a requirement but i do recommend investing more into it if you play something like trials of osiris because tier two might be a little bit too low for that playlist other than that it feels great the uh the super base cooldown is pretty generous you can get one you won't feel like it's taking too long last but not least we got strength i am investing a little bit into this because this melee is so fun it could be a little bit inconsistent at times but we'll break it down here as we continue to talk the aspects i mean the requirement here is definitely a child of the old gods every time you pop a rift we have that little void soul next to us and when we do enough damage it's going to go flying and tagging somebody and this is effective in so many different ways because not only does it do damage it has some benefits of giving you more abilities but what I love the most about it is so good at zoning. If enemy teams are trying to lock down a certain area or they're just camping too much, as soon as you get this child of all gods out there, they have to move out or spend some time shooting it, which gives you, you know, enough of a time window to make a play against them, whether it's pushing them, shooting them, or just taking these spots that they were trying to control. So child of the old gods, super S tier. I really like it. And next up, I actually love to use Feed the Void. Every time I get an ability killed, I feed myself Devour. With my melee or my Scatter Grenade, I can consistently have Devour, which is a nice way to just heal myself thanks to getting a grenade kill or whatever that may be. And I can just keep that chaining going on and on and on. I like to use these two aspects over the Chaos Accelerant, even though I do acknowledge this aspect as being really powerful for my playstyle specifically, I don't like the idea of charging a grenade. I don't have that kind of like, how would I say, play style to just pause, let me charge it, and then throw it. It's more like instant. Go, 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 go. I'm throwing the nade instantly, and I want to be able to shoot right away. What about the rest of the abilities? I'm using Scatter Grenade. This combined with Weakening Grenade gives you such a powerful, and I mean powerful grenade. It's not going to be as good as it is on a Titan, but it still puts in heavy work. If you don't like scatter grenade my other option would be the vortex grenade being able to trap somebody for a second is so effective at getting those cleanup kills all right so the pocket singularity i already kind of teased a little bit that's why this melee is so good i mean it's the only option that we have i wish we had more options but this is not too bad it can be inconsistent but i love throwing this around a tight and barricade it can kind of push them out you can throw this melee pretty far and it's going to lock onto targets give you that you know, free damage on a player basically because of how good it can lock on to a target. Now, Burst Slide is going to be the best option here. I don't like using Bling, Balance Glide, or Strafe Glide. This is the best jump, the best feeling to having that faster movement, being able to jump forward without feeling too slow, too floaty in the air, or just not being able to jump high enough. This is the, this is the best jump. It feels really balanced. It gives you everything that you need. As for the Fragments, let's take a look. Wakening targets, I already mentioned that with the grenades, definitely a must pick. Minus 20 discipline hurts though, so you're going to have to really invest in some armor that helps you out with that. Next up, we got Echo of Vigilance. Now, we mentioned this on the Titan, being able to defeat somebody in a 1v1 and get a little overshield right away, it's so clutch. You know, you can take an extra shot, you can go back to safety, and uh, if you manage to heal yourself because of Devour, now you have full health and that overshield too, making you all the more annoying to kill than the next person you try to duel. 
Next up, we have Echo Domineering. The reason I use this one is simply for the plus 10 intellect, as I really love to have those grenades available as I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. Players try to hide. Well, too bad. I got a grenade. You better fight me. Last but not least, we got Echo Provision. Damaging targets with grenades grants melee energy. And this is some nice synergy. Since I have high discipline, and I can throw those grenades out. It helps me get my pocket singularity back, which is a nice little backup ability to have on when I'm playing the game. As for the helmet, we're always going to prioritize a targeting for your primary and a targeting for your special weapon. You need more context? Check out the previous builds. This setup does not have any ways of really enhancing our reload speed or our dexterity. So we are going to invest one mod for each. I know you can proc the auto reloading things to transverse the steps, but you know, I'm not, I'm not always holding W. Sometimes I do need to stop a little bit and get that reload speed going on. So we do appreciate a reload of some type. Unflinching for your primary and your special weapon. And then here on the boots, we're going to be rocking a better already. Just another way of clutching up and healing myself on the spot. I do got two innervation mods to get more grenades, but you can change the last one to a holster mod. Um, but because we got transverse steps, I do recommend just innervation. So that's exactly what I run. Last but not least, just double bomber and a reaper mod. Pretty self-explanatory. It's a standard setup that I run on every single character. More grenades when I pop a rift. I make a norv. Uh, when I pop a rift, I just kill somebody and, and then I can just take that orb and heal myself and get more abilities. That pretty much covers my transverse steps setup and I like to use it on my Void Warlock. It's pretty good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much covers all my favorite and best builds that I use on my Titan Hunter and my Warlock. Which one did you like the most? All of them are really effective. I love using them in sixes and 3v3s and they're always like the reliable setups that I go back to when I want to slay, when I need a good reliable build, something that I know will always work. I hope this helps some of you, and if it did, do let me know in the comments down below. If you like these type of videos, maybe I can consider doing some more covering some other effective good builds that not might, be, might not be meta, but still very solid overall. Anyways, I'm out of here. Drop me a like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.